Go. Some stroke of luck, or by grace of God, if you will, I have come by or stumbled into a new state of being. Rather, I would say, I find myself awakened to a whole new way of life. My prayer used to be, Oh God, if there is a God, why has thou forsaken me? It has now only changed into something like this. Oh God, if there is a God, that bit if there is a God still remains unchanged. Why hast thou chosen to bestow all thy divine favours on me? But to describe it in such terms as illumination, enlightenment, or even by the Sanskrit word moksha or liberation, or even to use those fanciful words, the first and last freedom, radical mutation is to miss the point. It is into revealed religious truth, or even what we refer to as one beyond human intellect. There isn't anything mysterious about it. It is not what people talk of as the spiritual apprehension of truths intellectually incomprehensible. There is nothing mysterious about it. What has happened to me is a pure and simple physical phenomenon. Somehow, the machinations of the mind have come to a stop, and the senses have started functioning or operating in a very pure and simple way. That itself is an extraordinary thing. It is not a question of enlightenment spiritually or intellectually or in any form, or to use that vulgar expression, get religious. There is nothing to get converted to any belief or to any monastic state, or even to sit trapped in meditation seeking absorption into God or the infinite or whatever you call it. It isn't a tale imagining or accounting a world in which ourselves do not exist. It isn't an inexplicable affair, it is an explicable affair. There isn't anything to make a mystery of this. If any such thing happens to an individual, he is not concerned with the direct communion of the soul with God or any such thing. Then what then is the effect of this on conduct of an individual? It affects not only the conduct of the individual, but the totality of the human being. It is bound to affect others too. As the saying goes, you cannot light a candle and hide it under the bushel. Well, what do I think of Krishnamurti? He is a state of being. It being cannot be different from that of those of the sages, saints and saviors of mankind. The abstractions he throws at people is a kind of trick as it were, to trick you into that state of mind where the mind comes to, to a stop, a sudden stop and where something can happen. But if you repeat those phrases, it becomes a mere twaddle, a drivel, bold dash, gibberish. They haven't got much substance. You might as well quote a Bhagavad Gita or the Bible or even Quran or any one of the scriptures. That doesn't make any difference at all. You have added one more set of a new set of phrases. That's all there is to it. Why repeat those phrases? 
Why talk of flowers? Yes, this flower cult has become very fashionable. Even hippies have made it very popular. Haven't you seen those beautiful flowers painted in psychedelic colors on the pavements or the sidewalks or whatever you want to call it? This flower cult is indeed becoming very fashionable. You are talking of flowers. Look at the flower. Listen to the river. Watch the passing cloud. Where the eyes look at them and the ears listen to them. You are out of this structure once and for all. You will never ask these questions once again. Oh, what is there behind and beneath those abstractions that Krishnamurti throws at people? Is there anything at all? As a mind view, as a mind concept, as a mind vision, as a mind image, or even as a sanguine expectation, they sound marvelous. They're very charming words. If you really knew it, I don't think you would even want it. It is a dynamite. It isn't a thing to play with. Do I know it? Well, what a question. <laughs> I really don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Isn't If I tell you it is the same, what value has it? If I tell you it, it isn't the same, it has no value either. But why put these questions to ourselves? What is the way of knowing it, whether be it his or anybody else's? You have absolutely no way of knowing it. If by some luck, you stumble into it, it will be a completely and totally bewildering and puzzling sort of affair. You won't even bother to compare it with anybody else's. It isn't going to be the same. It, is going to, it isn't going to come about the way you imagine it, spiritual awakening or whatever you call it. It isn't going to come about in the way you imagine it. It will come about contrary to all your imaginings. It will come about in a very simple and quite an unexpected way. Well, anyway, what exactly it is? Can you tell me what it is that you are seeking or that you want it or that you are trying to find out? Can you tell me? Franchissant du coup l'abîme qui sépare au regard du philosophe, le physiologique du psychologique, je dirais que l'excès, s'il conduit parfois à l'écœurement, mène aussi souvent to change the entire structure and thought of civilization isn't an easiest thing. But that means the very foundations on which the superstructure of our civilization rests must be shattered. That can't be done very easily and that can't be done without a change in our intellectual and religious outlook. And the very educational system must change. But it is easy to say all that. Unless an individual changes, there isn't going to be any change at all. And even that change must be one without volition. And that requires tremendous and tremendous understanding. Uh, now let us see whether this is working. It seems to be working all right because the way this needle is moving shows that this is in perfect good condition. This seems to be working all right now. Don't you think so? What's the matter with this? Every now and then it goes off. Yes. Not four, four, six, four, seven. This is to test Philip's recording. If it were that simple, 
with all the descriptions we have in the Hindu and Buddhist scriptures, everyone in India would have been a great yogi. Oh, surely we have eight million sattvas wandering all over the country. There are so many claimants to what you call the spiritual enlightenment, with the result that you don't know who is actually enlightened or who is really and genuinely an authentic soul who has this spiritual awakening. Western disciples seem to be the measure of the, the greatness of a spiritual teacher these days. They have tremendous following in Europe, in America, and all over the world, trotting around the globe, talking to these people, has become very fashionable. Speaking. Do you know what it is? Or was it not Shelley who said this? Because it's one of those who are thought for today. In the life of a man of virtue and talent who should die in his thirtieth year is with regard to his own feelings longer than that of a miserable priesthood and slave who dreams out a century of good.